Hello students, my name is Niyati Said and thanks for watching Edupedia Word videos. My topic for the presentation is the fifth class that is Kingdom Animalia. So let's proceed towards our topic that is Animalia Kingdom. Animalia Kingdom we have already read before okay in detail but here I'll brief you. They are multicellular, that means uh, they are made up of uh, many cells. They are heterotropic in nature, that means they obtain their food from plants. They are totally dependent on plants for their food. They are eukaryotic organisms without the cell wall. Of course, without the cell wall because plants uh, have the distinguishing feature that is cell wall. Okay, This is not the feature of animal cell. Okay, They directly or indirectly depend on plants for food. They digest food in an internal cavity and store food reserves as glycogen or fat. Mode of nutrition is holozoic. They have a definite growth pattern and they grow into adults that have a definite shape and size. Okay, And the higher form of uh, animals, they show sensory and the neuromotor mechanism. Neuromotor mechanism, I'll be teaching you in detail in the neural coordination chapter of 11th standard. Most of them are capable of locomotion and the sexual reproduction is by copulation of male and female. Copulation means mating of male and the female followed by embryological development. Okay. Now let's study viruses and the viroids. Okay. And of course, lichens. Five kingdom classification of the RH Whitaker. He did not include a cellular organism such as viruses and the voroids and the lichens. Okay. Viruses are non-cellular and not truly living. They are not included in five kingdom classification. Viruses have an inert crystalline structure outside the living cell. Viruses are obligate parasites. They, when they infect a cell, they take over the machinery of the host cell to replicate themselves and thus finally it kills the host. This is the illustration of a bacteriophage. Uh, this is the hexagonal shape of its head. This is the main body and these are the tails. Okay. Its hexagonal uh, head ha has uh, nucleic acid contained in it and it is covered by capsid. And this rod uh, main body is covered by sheet. And this is this part they attach themselves with the host okay and thus they take over the machinery of the host cell to replicate themselves and thus it kills the host okay now viruses they are enclosed in a protective envelope they have a spikes which helps them to attach to the host cell okay and thus it overtakes the machinery of the host and finally it kills it they are non-cellular they do not respire they do not metabolize and they do not grow but they reproduce okay they contain a protein coat called the capsid they have a nucleic acid core containing DNA or the RNA okay that means viruses they both have some have DNA and some have RNA ribosomes and the enzymes are absent which are needed for metabolism okay they are considered both as living and the non-living things as viruses are in active when they are present outside of host cells and they are active inside of host cell strange it is isn't as they make use of raw materials and the enzymes of the host cells to reproduce and causes several infections okay Louis Pasteur he gave the name virus okay means venom or the poisonous fluid DJ Ivansky he discovered virus he recognized certain microbes that cause mosaic disease of tobacco they were smaller than bacteria because they pass through bacteria proof filters 
M. W. Bizernik. He demonstrated that the extract of the infected plants of tobacco could cause infection in healthy plants and called the fluid as contagium vivum fluidum. Okay, that means it is a infectious living fluid. Okay. W. M. Stanley, he showed that virus could be crystallized and crystal consist uh, largely of proteins. Okay, so these were the scientists that uh, researched about it. Virus is a nucleoprotein, that is, it has a protein coat, capsid, and the genetic material may be RNA or the DNA. No virus contains both RNA and DNA, just remember this. And the genetic material is very infectious. Okay. Uh, this is the virus okay this is the influenza virus it has a rna uh, contained within it it has neuraminidase okay these are the neuraminidase and uh, this is hemagglutinin and this is the capsid sheet which covers the viruses and this is the lipid envelope okay of the influenza virus Generally, viruses that infect plants have single-stranded RNA. It is generally seen, okay? Viruses that infect animals have either single or double-stranded RNA or double-stranded DNA. Bacteriophages, that means viruses that infect bacteria usually have double-stranded DNA, okay? Uh, examples is... Uh, Hepatitis C virus, coronavirus, herpes virus, influenza virus, smallpox virus, and the bird flu virus. Okay. See, this is the cartoon illustration. If I coat myself with this protein, they will never find me. Ha ha ha. A protein coat capsid is made up of a small subunits which protects the nucleic acid such as DNA and the RNA. A small subunits are known as capsomere that form a protein coat that is a capsid. Capsomeres are arranged in helical or the polyhedral geometric form. Okay. This is the helical geometric form. Okay, and this is the polyhedral geometric form and these are the capsomeres that has formed a capsid and which uh, contains nucleic acid within it. Okay, virus causes disease like mums, smallpox, herpes, influenza, AIDS. See, mums, smallpox, influenza herpes and the AIDS. In plants, the symptoms can be mosaic formation, leaf rolling, curling, yellowing and the vein clearing, dwarfing and stunted growth is seen in plants because of viruses. Okay. Viroid. As we have read viruses, now comes the viroid. Viroid it is an infectious agent with a free low molecular weight RNA and no protein coat. These are smaller than viruses. Okay. Size of the virus is that they can range from smallest being 10 nanometer to the largest of 400 nanometers. Okay. Theodine, it was discovered by Theodine. He found that it caused tartar spindle tuber diseases. What are the significant characteristics? Then they are obligate. Viroids are the obligates intracellular parasites. They require a host to cause damage, filterable, small enough to be filtrated. They contain an outer protein coat and the inner genome. They have only one kind of nucleic acid that is RNA or the DNA but never both. Okay. They lack metabolic abilities. Now come to the importances. Viruses can transfer genetic material between different
different species of host they are extensively used in genetic engineering viruses they also carry out natural genetic engineering a virus may incorporate some genetic material from its host as it's replicating and thus it transfers this genetic information to a new host this property can be utilized in genetic engineering the, and this process is known as transduction okay so this property of viruses has proved a boon for the genetic engineers because they can transfer genetic material between different species of host okay they are extensively used in genetic engineering now come to the lichens lichens are symbiotic associations mutually useful association between algae and the fungi when i say symbiotic relationship that means it is providing uh, benefits to both the parts that means algae and the fungi okay the algal component is called phycobiont that is autotrophic and the fungal component is known as mycobiont okay that is heterotrophic lichens are very good pollution indicators they do not grow in polluted areas okay um they are found almost everywhere and at all seasons they absorb nutrients and the pollutants from the air often to high concentrations different species show different sensitivities and the accumulation abilities they are symbiotic organisms the fungus cannot survive if the algae is killed by pollution okay so they are very good pollution indicators they do not grow in the polluted areas so whenever there is any climatic change lichen sh also show abnormal changes they may burst out or die out so they stand as a sacrificial indicator okay lichens may be important in contributing nitrogen to the soils in some deserts through being eaten along with their rock substrate substrate by snails which then defecate putting the nitrogen into the soil okay and thus lichens help bind and stabilize soil sand in dunes indicator of pollution that means presence of the sulfur dioxide in air reason that lichen is an indicator of air pollution is that they have different level of tolerance to sulfur dioxide lichens they obtain water mainly from air and they easily die in a small trace of sulfur dioxide in air okay and lichens is sensitive to polluted air with sulfur dioxide so this comes to an end thank you and keep watching edupedia word videos